Okay, so we're going to continue with a little bit of what we were doing last time for continuity, and then we will start going over new things. Okay, so for example, <coughs> for example, let's consider the following. This expression, 12a cubed plus 2a squared minus 4a. And the instruction is to factor this completely. <coughs> factor completely. <coughs> okay, so what is the first thing you should do? factor out the, the greatest common factor, the largest thing you can factor out. So, right, you can see that every one of these coefficients uh, is divisible by 2, and there is an a in every term, so you can factor out 2a. So 2a, <coughs> and then what is what will the first term be? Okay, good, 6a squared, and the next plus a, good, and then minus 2, good. Okay, so are we finished? <coughs> no, no, we're not finished. We could possibly factor something more. What could we possibly factor more? What else could factor? I mean, this expression in round parentheses, we might be able to factor this. Okay, so then we can't factor anything else out. There's not a common factor in all of those that we can factor out further, but we may be able to factor this, this expression into the product of two binomials. Okay, <coughs> so let's try and factor just this term. 6a squared plus a minus 2. Okay, <coughs> so we're hoping, right, we're going, this is just sort of, guessing at this point. We're going to guess that it factors into something like this. <coughs> okay. So I need two things to write here, one to write here, and one to write here. And I need their product to be what? 6a squared. Right? I need the product of two things. I need two things such that their product is 6a squared. So what do you think I can write right here? Okay. So not exactly 3 and 2. I need it to be 6a squared, so 3 and 2a. Good. So 3a and 2a. 3a and 2a. <coughs> now, in this position, right, in the green position, I need two things whose product is negative 2, right? Why negative 2? Because of this negative 2. Okay, <coughs> so what can I put in the green position? Plus 1 and minus 2. So like this, plus 1, minus 2. Okay, so then... How, how can we check and see if this is really correct? By, fa by uh, FOIL, by multiplying this out. So let's check and see if this is right. Okay, so then it will be 3a times 2a, so that will be 6a squared, and then 3a multiplied by negative 2, right, so that's minus 6a, and then 1 multiplied by 2a, so that's plus 2a, <coughs> and then 1 multiplied by negative 2, that's negative 2. Okay, so that would be 6a squared minus 4a minus 2. So is that what we needed? No, so we must have made an error. But that's okay, right, because we only lost a few moments of our life. Right? It, it's not a problem. Right? You just try something else. So it wasn't this one, <coughs> so let's try again. <coughs> so then 
we were here, 3A, 2A. Give, give me a different idea. <coughs> uh, like this, minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so let's check that. Okay, so if we were to do that, it would be 6a squared <coughs> minus, uh, no, let's see, 6a squared plus 6a minus 2a minus 2. So that would be 6a squared plus 4a minus 2. Is that what we needed? No, that's not it. Okay, so we must be getting close. So it wasn't that one. <coughs> so which wh which one is it? Ah, plus two minus one. So is that it? So how can we how can we verify if that's it? Multiply it out, right? Okay, good. So then we'll check. So then six a squared, and then minus three a plus four a minus 2. So that will be 6a squared plus a minus 2. Is that the one that we wanted? Ah, that's it. So the answer to the question, right, the original question that was asked is that 12a squared uh, cubed plus 2a squared minus 4a can be factored as 2a and then multiplied by what? 3a plus 2 multiplied by 2a minus 1. Okay, so any questions about this example? <coughs> so, a comment about this example. Okay, so a couple comments. First is that that seemed like a lot of, of sort of guessing and checking, right? Seemed like a lot of guessing and checking. It would have been nice, right, if we didn't have to do this sort of guess and check, guess and check work. Okay, so then in a later section that's coming, you will see how to do this mechanically with no guessing and no checking. It, you'll just have it immediately. But for now, you're more or less stuck with this guessing and checking. Okay, but don't worry because that's what paper is for. You just do this mechanically and you could, you know, if I wasn't up here trying to have a conversation with you, I could have done these three guesses and checks in about maybe 90 seconds, 30 seconds. So any question about this example? Any question about it? <coughs> okay. So then, these are going to be called special products. These are things to memorize. <coughs> memorize, and that is that a squared minus b squared so this will be the first special product. A squared minus B squared factors in a way that you already know how does it factor. Right? A plus B multiplied by A minus B. Okay. Two. How about this? A squared plus B squared. Hmm, how does this factor? A plus B, A plus B. Right, this, this one does not factor. Okay, so that's something you have to know. Right, so if it's the difference of squares, A squared minus B squared, that factors. The sum of squares, the sum of squares does not factor. <coughs> does not factor. Okay, three. <coughs> now, this one, A squared plus 2AB plus b squared. Okay, so what is this one then? <coughs> yes, a plus b all squared. Okay, now there's another one just like it. Okay, very similar, except now I'm going to write the, the right-hand side. This is a minus b squared. And, and how is it, what's the difference between the left-hand sides of these two lines? 
So everybody, does everyone understand what I mean by left-hand side? So then, <coughs> make sure, because I'm using jargon, right? This is the right-hand side of the equation, and the other side is the left-hand side. So just in case you've never heard that phrase. So, so I haven't written the left-hand side of, of item 4. How is it different from the left-hand side of item 3? Where, what negative? Because there's, ah, right, the 2AB. So it'll be A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. <coughs> right, very similar looking expression. Slightly different. Okay, <coughs> 5. Okay, so then, <coughs> now, this is A cubed minus B cubed. Right, so this looks like this looks like item 1. So what's the difference between item 1 and item 5? Right. Item 1 is the difference of squares, whereas item 5 is the difference of cubes. The difference of cubes. So the difference of cubes factors <coughs> as follows. It factors into a minus b. a minus b. <coughs> and then a squared plus AB plus B squared. So this is something that you will need to memorize. Okay, so then if we have the the difference of cube uh, the, the difference of cubes, then we also need to be able to factor the sum of cubes. So A cubed plus B cubed. In this case it will be A plus B multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay, so that you can see that these are quite similar. <coughs> quite similar. Okay, items five and six. Okay, so let's do some examples of these especially the we're going to do the cubes since this is the first time that you're seeing them. Okay, so for example, please tell me uh, please factor the following expression. x cubed plus 27. first thing you should do is you should write it as the sum of cubes. Okay, so x cubed is already a cube. So how do you write 27 as a cube? 3 cubed. Good. So you can see that we're going to use item 6. So then it will be x plus 3 multiplied by something. So multiplied by what? x squared minus 3x plus 9. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> any question about it? Okay, so let's try again. Slightly more complicated. How about 8y cubed minus, <coughs> uh, let's think about this, yeah, 27x cubed. Which rule are you thinking about using? Five. Okay, good. So if you're going to use five, the first thing you should do is you should rewrite the expression that I gave you as the difference of cubes. 
right? So then I'll give you a hint. Right? I'll rewrite the first term as a cube, right? So 8y cubed is not written as a cube, as a cube. I want to write it as something cubed. How can I rewrite 8y cubed as just one thing by itself, all cubed? 2y, right? I can put a 2y in here. So it's 2y cubed. Okay, then do something, you know, minus something analogous. <coughs> All right, good. This can be written as 3x cubed. Okay, so now you can see that that you have the difference of cubes. So if you're looking at item 5, what is playing the role of a? 2y. And what is playing the role of b? 3x, right? So I'll write that down. So then we're doing this. We're doing this with a is 2y and b is 3x. <coughs> so everybody sees a name and a gain? Okay. So then, that being the case, we can say that this is 2y minus 3x multiplied by a squared, which will be 4y squared, uh, plus ab, so plus 6xy, and then plus b squared, so plus 9x squared. <coughs> Any question about this example? Any question about it? So the sums and differences of cubes. <coughs> okay, so then maybe one more, just to make sure that we kind of clear on this matter. Please factor completely the following. 24x to the fourth minus 3x. do you think? Okay, factor out 3x. Okay, so if we do that, if we do that, then it's 3x multiplied by 8x cubed minus 1. 8x cubed minus 1. Okay, so then nothing further can be factored out as a greatest common factor, but the question is, can you factor that thing in parentheses? Yes, you can. Right, you can because wh which ha what phrase, why, what form is this 8x cubed? What form can 8x cubed minus 1 be put into? Right, item 5, the difference of cubes. The difference of cubes. So this could be written as, this could be written as 3x multiplied by 2x cubed minus 1 cubed because 1 is 1 cubed. <coughs> so this can be written as the difference of squares, or cubes, I mean. So then this is 3x, and then 2x minus 1. Okay, now multiplied by a squared, which is 4x squared, and then plus ab, so plus 2x, and then plus b squared, so plus 1. So it's, it's always kind of a little bit surprising to me when I think about something like this, right? We started out with this expression here, which seems like kind of a compact expression, and then you factor it, right, and it gets somehow a lot bigger looking. <coughs> but they're exactly the same, exactly the same thing. Okay, so any question about this? Okay. 
Okay, so then we'll look at, we'll do a couple examples of rational expressions and then we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, so someone explain to me in words again what a rational expression is. That's right, a ratio of polynomials. Right. A rational exp expression is a ratio of polynomials. <coughs> okay, so then let's do the following. So please simplify this expression, x minus y, all squared, divided by x squared minus y squared. Please simplify this expression as, as much as possible. What strategy should we take? What do you think? Sorry? Right, the denominator, right, that's one of that's the difference of squares. We know how that factors, right? The denominator factors into x plus y multiplied by x minus y. Okay, and the numerator factors as x minus y multiplied by x minus y. That's sort of weird. Okay, so then now, upon inspection, you can look at this and you should be able to tell, ah, there's some cancellation. What cancels? x minus y. Good, so this is x minus y over x plus y. So any question about this example? Okay, <coughs> so any questions about any things like this before we move on to other things? <coughs> any questions? Okay, <coughs> so now we're in section 1.5, which is called Exponents and Radicals. But don't get your hope up, hopes up, right? Radicals is maybe not as neat as it sounds. Okay, <coughs> so someone give me an example of a radical. What is a radical? Sorry? Right, radical two. What's the common name for that radical two? Starts with a F. And it ends with square root. Ah, the square root, right? Square root is the second radical. So then what's, uh, for example, the square root of 9? 3, right? These are all things that, that probably everyone's heard. Very good. <coughs> so then uh, we're going to get into some rules of exponents. Okay, so you'll recall from previous, previous uh, discussions that x to the n... Right, this means x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by dot 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 multiplied by x. And how many copies of x are there? There's n copies of x, right? That's the meaning of x to the n. So now we're going to be very explicit about some, some other related things. <coughs> and that is that this is true if n greater than 0 is an integer. So that's the case if n is greater than 0. So what about if n is 0? Right, then we're talking about x to the 0. So what is x to the 0? It's equal to 1. It's equal to 1, and this is when x isn't 0. When x isn't 0, because 0 to the 0, right? that's a 0 raised to the 0 power. This is undefined. Now, 
now we have something weird. So we're going to say something weird. So we said, OK, we have x to the n, where n is a positive integer, like x to the 3 is interpreted to mean x times x times x. And x to the 0 is 1. x to the 0 is 1, except when x is 0. So like 10 to the 0 is? 1. Negative 5 to the 0 is? 1. 100 million, billion, trillion, blah, blah, blah to the 0 is? 1. OK, good. So what could this mean? x to the x to the negative n. You know, so for example, x to the negative 2. So does that mean that instead of making, you know, if it was x to the 2, then it would be x times x. If it's x to the negative 2, does that mean that instead of adding copies, I should be subtracting copies? You know, so how does it, what does it mean here? So what is it going to mean? It means 1 over, 1 over x to the n. Well, I'll write it like this first. 1 over x to the n, which you can think looks like 1 over x times x times x times So, for example, just to make sure that the point is clear, is that one uh, is that x to the negative three. Right, that means one over x cubed. That means one over x cubed. Okay, which in turn means one over x times x times x. <coughs> okay, so any question about these statements? Okay, so then let's simplify this, or let's do an example of simplification is what I mean to say. So how about please simplify the following. <coughs> mm, that's boring. Okay, so then <coughs> how about how about 3x squared y to the negative 2 divided by x to the negative 3, y to the 4, and then I'll put a 5 here. I want you to simplify this expression as much as possible. So that's the instruction. So simplify <coughs> and use uh, positive exponents only. For example, in the numerator, I have y to the negative 2. Right? That doesn't have a positive exponent, so, so that's not a legitimate answer yet. Okay, so someone tell me how we can go about doing this. Okay, but we haven't, we haven't talked about that yet, so then we're going to need to do this very carefully since this is the first time, right? So then 3x squared multiplied by 1 over y squared, right? That's what the numerator means. That's what the numerator means. Similarly, similarly, the denominator means 1 over x cubed multiplied by y to the fourth multiplied by 5. That's what the denominator means. <coughs> Okay, so then now I can say that, well, uh, here, for example, we're dividing by a fraction. Dividing by a fraction. So then division by a fraction is the same as what? Multiplication by its reciprocal. Multiplication by its reciprocal. So this is 3x squared multiplied by 1 over y squared in the numerator, just leaving the numerator the same, and then y to the fourth multiplied by 5, and now I'm going to move this 1 over x cubed over here and say that that's x cubed over 1. So instead of multi dividing by 1 over x cubed, it's the same as multiplication by x cubed over 1. It's reciprocal. OK, good. <coughs> so then now you can see that I can move this x cubed and do what with it? 
yeah, it, become, it can become x to the fifth, okay? But I'll say that it's 3x squared multiplied by x cubed multiplied by 1 over y squared over y to the fourth times 5. All right, so then in the next step, I'll write x to the 5. So <coughs> besides writing x to the 5, right, so 3x to the 5, I'm going to say that, well, I can take this, I can take this fraction and move it over to the to the side and say that it can be rewritten like y to the fourth times five and then multiplied by one over y squared. <coughs> I realize that it feel, feels like I'm taking the long way around, okay? but I'm just, I always take the long way around to show all the steps on the first example. It won't be this long in the coming example. <coughs> So then 3x to the 5, y to the 4, times y to the 2, times 5. <coughs> so then 3x to the 5 over y to the 6, times 5. Okay, and that's about as simple as it gets. So then I said use positive exponents only. Have I satisfied the, the requirements? Okay, so then now, I'm go so I'll say that that was part one. Now part two is now express, express your answer uh, as a single term and not a ratio. using negative exponents as necessary. Next step term. <coughs> okay, so what am I trying to get you to do? No, not quite the original. Yeah, but more like the original, sort of. Okay, so then you could say that this is 3 fifths, right? That's the constant term. And then x to the 5, x to the 5, and then what can I write here? y to the, y to the negative 6. y to the negative 6. Okay, so these two expressions that I'm now boxing in red, oh no, not that one, these two. They mean exactly the same thing. <coughs> Just different ways to write the same thing. Okay, so any question about this first very verbose opening example? <coughs> okay. So <coughs> now we're going to get some simplifying rules that make these kinds of problems can solve them much more rapidly. Okay, so then besides the rules that we know, so I'm going to rewrite some of the rules that we know, x to the n multiplied by x to the m. We already demonstrated this is x to the n plus m. We already showed that that was true. Similarly, x to the n all raised to the m. We already showed that this is x to the mn. Right, we already did that uh, last Thursday. Okay, and the last rule that we did last Thursday was xy to the n can be rewritten as what? x to the n, y to the n. So these are rules that we demonstrated last time. These are rules that we demonstrated last time. Okay, so now, in addition to these rules, right, we have rules that deal with <coughs> instead of adding or multiplying the exponent, okay, now we're going to be uh, subtracting exponents. Okay, so then, <coughs> for example, x to the n over x to the m. So what will this be? Yes, x to the n minus m. Right, and this is something that you already knew. Right, because you already knew 
for example, something like this, x to the 5 over x to the 2, what should this be? x to the 3, right? Okay, so then for those of you that are just slightly uncomfortable with me using n and m, how did you, how did you get 3? 5 minus 2, right? 5 minus 2, no problem. Okay, <coughs> similarly, how about x to the 2 over x to the 10? x to the negative 8, right? So you could say 1 over x to the 8 or x to the negative 8. Okay. <coughs> so any question about this? Okay, the reason why this works, right? The, we the reason why this works is you could say, well, it, you could say that x to the n over x to the m is you could say that it is x to the n multiplied by x to the negative m. Okay, so then now you have two things being multiplied with the same base, so what do you do with their exponents? You add them. Okay, so what is n plus negative m? n minus m. Okay, alternatively, you could take this expression and put n copies of x in the numerator and m copies of x in the denominator, etc. So how about this expression, x over y to the n? Yes, x to the n over y to the n. Okay, so I'll dispense with actually demonstrating these. <coughs> the way I demonstrated the other ones because they demonstrated in much the same way. Okay. <coughs> so, for example, let's take the, pre the previous example <coughs> and let's do it far more rapidly now that we have these other tools. Okay. Okay. So then, <coughs> you could do it like this. Well, this is 3, and then now I have x to the 2 over x to the negative 3. So when you have division, when you have division, what do you do with exponents? You subtract them. So this will be x to the 2 minus negative 3. Okay, and this will be y to the, now I have again division, so this will be y to the negative 2 minus 4. Okay, and this is, <coughs> I'll put the 5 over here, so 3 fifths. Okay, so then it will be 3 fifths, and then what will be the exponent for x? 5, right? 2 minus negative 3 is 5. And then what will be, be the exponent for y? Negative 6. So does that agree with what we determined previously. Yeah, it does, right? <laughs> but it was but but this is emphatically much shorter, right? Way to arrive at the same conclusion. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, alternatively, alternatively another another way to solve the same kind of problem is the following uh, notion, and that is you could say, well, how about this expression? Uh, a cubed times 5 over, say, b squared a to the negative 10. So I heard this said before, so I'll, I'll say it again. I'll, I will go ahead and say it because I want to make sure you know that it's okay. So you see this a to the negative 10, right? What a lot of students say is, well, that a to the negative 10 is in the denominator, so I want to move it to the numerator or whatever. That's sort of a colloquialism. So if you do want to move this move this a to the negative 10 to the numerator, then how do you do that? What does it, what does it mean to do that? Right, so then you, you reposition it in the numerator, but then you have to change something. And what was it? 
the sine of, but not, not the sine of a to the negative 10, the sine of the exponent, right? So moving a to the negative 10 from the denominator to the numerator, right, has the effect of changing the SIGN of the uh, exponent, okay? So then x cubed times 5 times a to the 10, right? So it got moved to the numerator. But notice, when it moved, the exponent switched from negative 10 to positive 10. Okay, so then this would be a to the 13 times 5 over b squared. Okay, so something that's slightly, that's just the same thing, but maybe slightly more disturbing to students for some reason. How about x squared y to the negative 3? And then I'll put, I don't know, y to the fifth here. Okay, so then now, now what can you do? <coughs> right now, now you can move the y to the negative 3, which is in the numerator, to the denominator. And if you move things from the numerator to the denominator, what, what happens to their exponent? It changes sign again, right? So then this will be x squared over y to the fifth, y to the three, right? So you can see that upon moving the y cubed term from the numerator to the denominator, the sign of its exponent changed, okay? So then this will be x squared over y to the eighth. Okay, so any question about this? <coughs> Okay, so now let's do some slightly more involved examples to test, test your currently gained knowledge and maybe your previously gained knowledge. Okay, so then how about, how about 2a to the negative 2b and then all of this raised to the negative 3 <coughs> and then divided by a to the negative 4. Okay, so the instruction is to simplify this as much as possible using positive and then your answer must have positive exponents only. Okay, so um, the numerator looks like it's the most complicated, right? The denominator, you can see probably eventually we're going to move the a to the numerator, right? But I'm going to worry about that in a minute because the numerator seems like it's the most complicated thing. So what is the first thing I should do? Right, let's distribute. Let's distribute the negative 3 exponent. Okay, so then this will be 2 to the negative 3. Okay, and then this will be a to what power? Six. Right? And how did you how did you arrive at six? Negative two times negative three. Right. So then I'm going to do this in steps just to make sure it's clear. So negative two to the negative three, and then b to the negative three over a to the negative four. Okay. So then two to the negative three. Well, that's one over two to the three in the numerator. Okay, then a to the negative 2 to the negative 3. When you have exponents which are iterated like so, you combine the exponents by multiplying them. So this is a to the positive 6. Okay, and then b to the negative 3 over a to the negative 4. Okay, <coughs> so then what's, um, what's a simpler way to write 1 over 2 to the 3? 1 over 8, good. So, <coughs> I'll put the 1 8 out front, so 1 8, and then a to the 6, okay, so then what can I do with the b to the negative 3? Move it to the denominator, and what can I do with the a to the negative 4? Move it to the numerator, right? Notice that the 
the, the B with its exponent and the A with exponent it, its exponent moved, they swapped positions, and when they did that, the, the sign of their exponents changed. Okay, so then finally you could rewrite this as a 1 8 A to how much? 10 over B to the 3. Okay, so any question about this example? Okay. <coughs> So here's one. Okay, so for example, how about five a to the negative one plus five b a to the negative two? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to I want you to write as a single fraction. with positive exponents only. I'm going to solve this question twice. I'm going to solve it the long way, which is perfectly legitimate, but then I'm going to show you a very short way to do this when you become comfortable and familiar with exponents. <coughs> All right. So, on the one hand, you could say that, well, this is 5 over a over a plus 5b over a squared. 5b over a squared. So then in order to make these a make this a single fraction, you need to do what? Find a a common denominator. So the denominator of the first term, the first uh, term in the sum is a, and the denominator in the second term is a squared, so what do we need to do to the first term? Multiply by a over a. Okay, good. So this is 5a over a squared plus 5b over a squared. So you can see now there's a common denominator so that you can perform the sum right, and obtain that this is 5a plus b, uh, 5b over a squared. Okay, and if you, you know, if I if I said additionally that you should factor it or whatever, then you could say that this is 5 a plus b over a squared. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, now <coughs> I'm going to make a slightly different problem slightly different problem and I'm going to write it in a different color and I want you to ask I want to ask you what you would do if you saw this instead. What if you saw this instead? 5x plus 5y x squared. Now you can see they're kind of similar looking. They're similar looking. The fives are the same. All I did was I changed, you know, the a to the negative 1 to x. So what if what if I gave you the thing in red and I said I want you to factor it? What would you factor out? You'd factor out 5x. Factoring out the 5 is obvious. What about the x? Why why did you decide to factor out a single x instead of 2x's or 12x's or whatever? So what I'm trying to get at is what is the rule for deciding how much x you should factor out? Why didn't you factor out any y's? Why wouldn't you factor out any y's? Right, because because there's no y's with the five x. So now I want you to look at this at this expression. Okay, five a to the negative one plus five b that's a five b a to the negative two. 
Okay, so my claim to you is you can factor something out of here. Okay, so then first off, you can obviously factor a 5 out. Right, you can obviously factor a 5 out. This is 5 a to the negative 1 plus b a to the negative 2. Right, so there's probably no arguments here. <coughs> but you can factor out a power of a as well. What power of a should you factor out? Uh, not negative one. I mean, you could. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But the question is, is what will give you the nicest answer? Uh, it will be a to the negative two. It will be a to the negative two. So then, <coughs> what is the rule? The general rule for deciding how much you should factor out. So then, in this one, how, what is the power of x? One. So you should factor out 1x because that's the smallest one. Right? There's 1x, so that's the smallest one, so you factor out 1x. So then now, in this expression, in the first term, how much y is there? None, 0. And how much y is there here? 1. So you should factor out how many y's? 0, right? because 0 is smaller than 1. And now here's the strange thing. It's only strange because the negative how many a's are in here? Ne negative one. How many a's are in here? Negative two. Which one is smaller? Negative two is smaller. So how much should you factor out? Negative two of them. Right? You should factor negative two of them out. So when you are deciding, when you are deciding, I wish this cord was just a little thin. One or two, you choose one. Zero y's or one y, you choose zero y's. Negative one a's or negative two a's, you choose negative two because negative two is smaller. <coughs> okay, so this can be written as five a to the negative two multiplied by something. Right. So first, the term that goes here is b, right? Because b times a to the negative two is b a to the negative two. But the question is. What goes here? Right? What term goes here in this open spot? A. Just A. Because what is A multiplied by A to the negative 2? A to the negative 1. OK, and then this expression, this expression, can be, no, not black either, green. This expression can be writ rewritten as 5a plus b, and then I can take this a to the negative 2 and make it have a positive exponent by doing what? Putting it in the denominator. So isn't that the same expression that we got on the left-hand side? Yeah, it's exactly the same, but notice it didn't require finding any common denominators or things like that. So any question about this example? Okay. <coughs> so now we have a remark about scientific notation. <coughs> scientific notation. <coughs> So, it is a number, number, is said to be in scientific notation <coughs> if it is in the form a multiplied by 10 to the n <coughs> with 1 less than or equal to a strictly less than 10 and n an integer. So 
so for example, let's make sure that, let's try and get the point to be clear with some examples. So I have a question for you. How about 3.1 uh, times 10 to the 5? Is this in scientific notation? So this is, this cross right here means times. It's not a, it's not a X as in the letter. So is this in scientific notation? Yes, it is. Okay, how about this example? Uh, 31.5 times 10 to the 5. Is this in scientific notation? Okay, so I disagree with yes. Right? What is the what is the rule? The rule is that the thing in front, right, this part A, has to be between one and ten. So is thirty one point five between one and ten? No, it is not in scientific notation. So no, so thirty one point five is not between one and ten. So no, this is not in scientific notation. However, however. You could, you could fix it. You could say, well, this even though this number is not in scientific notation, it's still a perfectly understandable number, and I could rewrite it to put it in scientific notation. So how could you rewrite it to put it in scientific notation? Right, 3.15 times 10 to the 6. Right, so then what happened, ooh, what happened to the decimal point? Right, I moved it one to the left, like this. I moved it one to the left. What happened to the exponent? I increased it by one. Okay. <coughs> okay, good. So then, let's try and make sure that everyone understands the meaning of these things. So again, for example, this number, 3.1 times 10 to the 5. So this is a number that's written in scientific notation. Now I want you to write it as a decimal without an exponent, okay, meaning a, a, a number. So what does this mean? And I want you to write it without an exponent. So how much is it going to be? Is that what it is? Okay, so then it will be 3, and then I need to move this. In order to get rid of the, the 10 to the 5, I have to move the decimal 5 places to the right. right. So then, you know, I'll move it one place to the right so that you get the idea. Okay, so three. this will be 31.0 times 10 to the 4. Right, I move the decimal place 1 to the right. Okay, so then I could, you can imagine I'll do four more steps, but I'm not going to do four more steps, right? I'm just going to finish it and say that, well, this is 31 and then uh, one, two, three, four zeros. Okay, so 310,000. <coughs> okay, so any question about this example? Yes? Yes, of course. It's not necessary to <coughs> ask. Okay, so then, uh, how about this example? How about 1.63 uh, times 10 to the negative 3? Okay, so please rewrite this without, without uh, the 10 to the negative 3 term. So what do you think? Yeah, so now the decimal point needs to move to the left. Okay, by how many places? Three, three places to the left. So again, I'll, I'll do the first one. So 0 0.163 times 10 to the negative two, right? I moved it one place to the left and then that 
increase the exponent by 1. So then you can imagine I do several more steps. And so then it will be 0 0.00163. Okay. Okay, so then two more examples to make sure that the matter is clear. So how about I give you 0 0.000. 4H3, please write this in scientific notation. So now instead of going from in the one direction, we're going in the opposite direction. Okay, similarly, please write the following number in scientific notation. So then, right, I need to turn this sequence of digits into something between 1 and 10. So what is the correct number that's between 1 and 10? 4.83, right, 4.83. And then in doing that, in doing that, how many places did I have to move the decimal? Four. four. One, two, three, four places. Okay, so I counted that it moved four places. What does that have to do with the remainder of the problem? times 10 to the four, uh, negative 4, right? <coughs> okay. So then, so then, now, what is the correct number for the second problem? What is the correct number between 1 and 10? 7.8003. Right, and then how many places did I have to move the decimal? Right, 1, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then times ten to the five. Okay, so any question about me? <coughs> okay. So scientific notation, probably something you've seen before. They're going to want to see that like in general chemistry and blah, 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 blah. They deal with significant figures and things like that, but we're not going to deal with that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, rational exponents. Rational exponents. <coughs> okay, so specifically, Specifically, we want to be able to deal with this example. So, sort of to start about start out with, what about what about nine to the one half? Right. We want to give some meaning to this expression. We want to give some meaning to it. So, to sort of evoke what meaning this might possibly have. Right, we could sort of try and try and wedge this into the existing information that we already have. Right, according to the existing information, the information that we already have, whatever nine to the one half is, we don't know. What if I square it? Right, what if you take nine to the one half and you square it? Well, if you just sort of blindly treat this with the information that we have, you can view this as an iterated exponent, right? Nine to the one half to the two. And when you iterate exponents, what are you supposed to do? with them. Multiply them, right? So this will be 9 to the 2 over 2, 9 to the 2 over 2, which is 9 to the 1, so 9. So 9 to the 1 half, whatever it is, when you square it, you should get 9. So can you think of something that you square it and you get 9? 3, right? If you square 3, you get 9. Can you think of something else? Negative, negative 3. Ah, so you could also square negative 3, because negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. OK, so for this reason, <coughs> you know, so then 9 to the 1 half candidates, right, candidates, uh, are 3, 
and negative 3 because 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, so there's a little bit of, of consideration that we need to make. There's a little bit of considerations. Okay, similarly, okay, we still haven't written down any definite information. We're just sort of wondering aloud. What about what about something like 8 to the one-third? Right, 8 to the one-third. Well, I don't know what 8 to the one-third is. We haven't said what it has to be yet. We haven't said what it has to be. Okay, but if we just make this try to agree with the information that we already know, then I might consider what expression? So I'll consider 8 to the one-third raised to what? To the 3, right? 8 to the 1 third to the 3. 8 to the 1 third to the 3. Well, if we just sort of force this into the existing exponent rules that we know, then we have iterated exponents. That'll be 8 to the 3 over 3, which is just 8. So whatever 8 to the 1 third is, if I cube it, I should get 2. Uh, <laughs> ah, I should get 8. <laughs> so can you think of a number that when you cube it, you get 8? Two, okay, <laughs> right? Is that the only number? Ah, so I got you, right? <laughs> right, I, f I was fishing for that, right? So then when you're squaring it, right, on the previous example, it could have been three squared is nine, but negative three squared is also nine. Okay, now here we said, well, two cubed is eight, but is negative two cubed eight? No, right, negative two cubed is negative eight. Ah, so there's a little bit of something going on here, right? So on the one, on the first example, negative was okay. In the second example, negative not okay. Right? So there's some, some things to consider. Okay, <coughs> so we need to have very careful rules. Okay, so the rule is as follows. A to the one over N is equal to b, right? So then what we're saying is this, is that if we are given an integer which is positive, uh, positive integer. So now what we're doing is we're defining every expression that looks like, you know, a to the 1 over 2 a to the 1 over 3, a to the 1 over 4, a to the 1 over 5, etc. So we're going to define all of these things. a to the 1 over n is equal to b means that a is b to the n. Right, so what what's happening here is that the thing in red the thing in red, we already have a meaning for the thing in red, right? B to the n, that means that A is what you get when you take B and you make n copies of it and multiply them all together, right? So you have something, you have a meaning for the thing in red. So what we're saying is that this is a synonym. You can say it like this instead, right? So it's just, this is like a linguistic thing. It's like saying, well, you know, it's shorter to say to say the thing, or more convenient to say the thing in gr the green box, but it means the thing in the red box. Right, so these are synonyms of each other. Okay, <coughs> so then this is the first case. This is when n is odd. In the second case, slightly different, right? A to the 1 over n equal to the absolute value of b. <coughs> means that a is b to the n when n is even and a is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. 
okay. <coughs> so I'd like to point something out. Okay, so then if you if n is even, like a to the one over two, or a to the one over four, or a to the one over one hundred, then the result has to be positive. Right? The result has to be positive. That's the part of what the rule is implying here. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so <coughs> let's do some examples of this to make sure that this is clear. So for example, let's compute uh, 16 to the 1 half. So then I'm aware that many of you know what, what, what's happening, but I want to make sure that you understand mechanically and algebraically what's really happening here, okay, without just being able to quote something from memory and, and not being really comfortable with it. This means, this means that let's say that we don't know what 16 to the 1 half is. So let's say that it's equal to x. Okay, then according to the previous page, this is just a, a synonym right a way to write to write that 16 is equal to x to the 2 16 is equal to x squared so can you think of any positive x such that when you square it you get 16 4 right <laughs> okay so i realize this is sort of a strange way to be thinking about it but you we'll get we'll get to the way that you're probably thinking about it currently in about five minutes. Okay, so any question about this example? Any question about it? Okay, so then how about so that no, because it has to be the positive one. <coughs> right? So what I'm what's being asked is this, right? Sixteen to the one half. Right? It has to be the positive one. We're not asking so th it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit confusing because, you know, in the intermediate part here, in the intermediate part was this equation. This equation, this particular equation, has two solutions, right? This equation has solution 4 and negative 4. But what we were asking for was what is, what is in the red box, and the red box has to be positive. Okay, <coughs> good. So then, uh, for example... 1 over 81 raised to the 1 fourth. Hmm, so what do you think? Okay, so then, <coughs> so then, we could say, well, I'm not sure what that is, so I'm going to call it x. 1 over 81 to the 1 fourth. I'm going to call it x. Okay, now this is just a, this is a, a math sentence, right? A math sentence, and it has the same meaning as this math sentence. It has the same meaning as 1 over 81 is equal to x to the what? 4. x to the 4. So can you think of any number that when you raise it to the fourth power you get one over eighty one? Yeah, you're th yeah. So how about this? You know, in your brain you might solve this similar equation, right? Eighty one is y to the four. Can you think of any solution to that? Three, right? So then what will be the solution to the to the to the x equation? It will be one third. So any question about these? Okay. So now, <coughs> now, we finally have a definition for rational exponents, for fully rational exponents. So 
So right now we have definitions for the following. We have a definition for x to the n, and we also have a definition for x to the 1 over m. We have definitions for those two things, and now we're going to combine them together so that we have this, x to the n over m. x to the n over m. <coughs> so this, this is, by definition, equal to x to the 1 over m to the n. Okay, that is its meaning. Right, this, this, right, is the shortcut way. Right, this is its meaning. Okay, so then, that being the case now, we're going to need to do some examples to make sure that this much is clear. So how about 27 to the 2 thirds power? Okay, and then this must be completed without a calculator, right? We've got to know how to do this. <coughs> So since this is the first example, I will, I will do it, right? So then according to the rule, according to the rule, this is 27 to the 1 third to the 2, right? That's what the rule says it has to be. So then what can I replace inside of the square parentheses? It's 3, right? Because 27 to the 1 third, right? 27 to the 1 third, I think we did it up, up a little higher on the page. It's 3, right? So that this is, this is 3 to the 2, and then 3 to the 2 is 9. Okay, good. So any question about this example? Okay. <coughs> Another lovely example. So how about... How about 36 to the negative one half? At least according to my taste, right? As long as you perform correct mathematical operations, I don't care so much how you do it. But according to my taste, I would say first, well, I'll say that that's 1 over 36 to the positive 1 half. That's what I would do. And then in my brain, I would do the little juggling and say, well, 36 to the 1 half, I need something that when squared gives 36. Okay, so then what would, what when squared gives 36? 6, right? So 1 over 6. What about 1 over negative 6? Would that be a solution to this question? No, right? Because when, when you have a, when the, you know, 36 to the 1 half, right, that has to be positive. That's the requirement. That's the definition. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, good. We're almost ready to have a break, but not yet. <coughs> okay. So let's do a couple more examples. Try and make sure that <coughs> the matter is clear. So how about a to the one-half a to the one-half multiplied by a to the negative two-thirds and then raise this all to the, uh, no, divided by a to the one-fourth, <laughs> lovely, and then raise this all to the eighth. Okay, and I want you to simplify this expression. <coughs> so yes, to the one-fourth.
write your answer with a positive exponent. So what do you think the first thing we should do is? Distribute the 8, right? You could distribute the 8 to each one of them. What else could you do besides distributing the 8? Right, we could move a, we could move the negative exponent to the denominator. Okay? You could simplify everything inside inside of the round parentheses first. Right? You could do that. <coughs> There's a variety of things you could do. I'm going to distribute the 8, right? If you did something different first, that's perfectly legitimate, so long as you did a legitimate mathematical operation. Okay, so then this will be a to the 1 half to the 8, and then a to the negative 2 thirds to the 8, over a to the 1 fourth to the 8. That's what I mean by distributing the 8. Okay, so then now, the term in the top left, a to the 1 half to the 8, right, that's iterated exponents. How do you combine iterated exponents? Just multiply them. So this will be a to the 4th, okay, and then multiplied by a to the negative 16 over 3. No cancellation there, but that's okay. Okay, and this will be a to the, in the denominator, a to the what? Two, right? Good. Okay, by now you should be able to see that ah, the a to the four and the in the numerator and the a to the two in the denominator will what will happen to them? Right? They can cancel. Right, they can cancel so that we'll get a to the two. Well I'll write it like this four minus two and then minus sixteen over three. Right, that will be the new exponent. <coughs> okay, now we need to carry out this subtraction. Right, so this will be a to the 2 minus 16 over 3. So 2 is 6 over 3, so this is uh, equal to a to the 6 over 3 minus 16 over 3. Okay, so then 16 over th 6 over 3 minus 16 over 3 is uh, negative 10 over 3. And then I said in instruction, I didn't write it down, I said it aloud. And according to that instruction, is this the answer to the question? No. What instruction did I say? Positive exponent. Right, positive exponent. So how could you rewrite this with a positive exponent? 1 over a to the 10 thirds. Good. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> any question about it? Okay, moving right along. <coughs> so for various historical reasons, for various historical reasons, the, the type of exponent x to the 1 over n, like x to the 1 over 2, x to the 1 over 3, x to the 1 over 7. These things have a, even another name, okay? And these things are called radicals, okay? So then, <coughs> radical expression. Okay, unfortunately, this doesn't mean awesome. I'm not sure why <coughs> the choice of the word radical is chosen. Okay. So we have this this meaning, right? This notation. Okay, this is a short a shorter way, a short way to write what? x to the 1 over n, right? So we started out by saying that, okay, well, we have x to the n, okay? We have x to the n. So now by y to the 1 over n, we mean a y, 
such that y is equal to x from the n, right? So the 1 over n thing is defined in terms of something else. Okay, now we have the radical n. <laughs> radical n. Okay, which is defined in terms of x to the 1 over n, which is in turn defined in terms of something else. Right? And so this is the way math goes for those of you that are considering being a math major. It's right, this is defined in terms of that, it's defined in terms of that, right? And the rabbit hole just really deep. Okay, <coughs> so this is where n is a positive integer. Okay, so, you know, just for an example, you know, the fifth root of x, right, the fifth radical of x called the fifth root of x, how can you rewrite this with a exponent? x to the 1 over 5. Okay, then as, a, as an additional piece of historical momentum and ap apocrypha, really, what if, what if you see this? Right, so that is to say that the n isn't shown. It's not there. Ah, then n is interpreted to be 2. Right, so if, if the n isn't there, if the n isn't there, then this is understood to be the second root, which means x to the 1 half. Okay, so that number's not there, then that number is understood to be 2. Okay, so for example, right, the square root of 9 is understood to mean 9 to the 1 half, which of course we now know is 3. Okay, so this is an important point that is, in my experience, missed significantly in instruction before university, and that is that the square root of a number is positive or zero. There is no negative square root of a number. Okay, there isn't one. <coughs> okay. So then it is a fact that, for example, negative 3 squared is 9, but that doesn't mean that negative 3 is a square root, is, is, is the square root of 9, because the square root of 9 is 3. <coughs> Okay, so any question about just this notation here? Okay, so for example, please uh, <coughs> evaluate the following. Okay, so this is pronounced as the cube root of 64. So please evaluate it. So I know I know that many of you have these memorized. That's good. But what if the instruction was I said evaluate this showing all steps? What would you write down? Right, this means, right? It means 64 to the 1 over 3. So if 64 to the 1 over 3 is equal to x, then what we need, what we need is an x such that 64 is equal to what? x cubed. So can you think of an x that gives you this? 4. Four. Right, 4. Okay. <coughs> so now, And that is, here is a small table that you should memorize. Okay. Wait, I need to. <coughs> so these are all numbers that you should recognize. And you should probably just go ahead and memorize this table. So then, two, three, four, five. 
So we're going to raise, this will be the, <coughs> the integer. Right, and this row over here will be the exponent. <coughs> okay, so then one, oops, two, three, four, five. So these are things that <coughs> would be in your interest to memorize. So then we're going to fill this out. So 2 to the 1 is what? It's 2, right? So 2, 3, 4, 5, right? That would be. So then now how about 2 to the 2? What's 2? Right? 4. And then 9. And then 16. And then 25. So 5 squared is 25. Okay. <coughs> so then 2 to the 3, right? So now the next row is going to be the cube. Right, so 2 to the 3 is what? 8. 3 cubed, 27, good. 4 cubed, 64. And 5 cubed, 125. Okay, good. So then now the power 4s. Okay, so then 2 to the 4 is what? 16. 3 to the 4 is 81. Okay. 4 to the 4 is. Mm, starting to reach the limit here, huh? 256. 256. And then uh, 5 to the 4 is what? 625. Good. Okay, let's see. Now we're now I'm getting to my limit here. <laughs> the next row is my limit. Okay, so then two to the five is what? Thirty-two. Three to the four is two hundred forty-three. Very good. Okay, four to the five is. 1, 0, 2, 4, good. Okay, <coughs> and then 5 to the 5 is 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay, so then these numbers, right? So how many numbers have I written down? 20 numbers. Really, not even 20, right? Because the first row doesn't count. Right, so really, I've only written down 16 numbers. You should recognize all 16 of these numbers. Okay, they should be easily recognizable to you. And you should be able to know, what if I say something like, well, I want you to compute the fifth root of 3125. What is that? And, I, and understand the context is that I want you to do this without a calculator. <laughs> right? You're not going to have a calculator. So what is it? It's 5. It's 5. Alternatively, I could say something like, OK, I want you to, I want you to compute 64. And then I want you to do the following. The cube root of that, and then raise it to the 4. <coughs> and that seems really pretty serious. <laughs> <Right>. <coughs> okay. So how can we go about doing this? Right, should you do 64 and raise it to the 4th power? No, 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 you should avoid that, right? <laughs> not you're not going to have a calculator, so you shouldn't do that. Right, so what you should do is you should say, well, at least according to the rules, right, this is 64 uh, to the 4, and then that radical 3 means what? It means exponent 1 third. It means exponent 1 third. All right. Since it means exponent one third, then what I can do is I can switch the order of these two. Right, I can say that this is, well, this is 64 to the 4 over 3. And then I can say, oh, well, that's 64 to the 1 third to the 4. And now suddenly this is a much easier question because by now, right, looking at the table, you should know, ah, 64 has a cube root, an integer cube root. What is the integer cube root of 64? It's 4 right, to 
the four. And four to the four is another thing that you should memorize. What is four to the four? 256. Right, so this is a computation that is perfectly legitimate for me to ask you to do without a calculator. Okay, so any question about this table or its usage? Okay, <coughs> I'm not going to ever ask you, you know, you could compute the fourth root of 81, that's three. I'm never going to ask you to by hand compute the fourth root of 80, right? Because that's some, that's some decimal, one of that's some decimal expansion. Who knows what it is? I don't care. <coughs> okay. So, let's do some examples of simplifying some of these expressions. So how about the square root the square root of 25x to the 4 y squared and this is assuming that x and y are positive Okay, so since this is the first example, we'll do I'll do it verbosely. Right? Verbosely, you could say, well, this is 25x to the 4, y to the 2, and then I'll switch the, s the radical to its fractional exponent, what? 1 half, right? Because when the index is missing, the index is understood to be 2. Okay, so now, <coughs> now the 1 half can be distributed to each part, 25 to 1 half x to the 4 to 1 half, y to the 2 to 1 half, <coughs> y to the 2 to 1 half. Okay, <coughs> now 25 to the 1 half, what is that? 5, good. Okay, so then now x to the 4 to the 1 half, these exponents are iterated, so then what do you do with the exponents when they're iterated? Multiply, right? So then this will be x to what? Good. Now the exponents are iterated y to 2 to 1 half. So what do you do when they're iterated? Multiply. So this will be what? Just y. Right? y to the 1. Okay, so any question about this example? Now I have a different example that is slightly. So first off, a couple comments, right? So then it's it's fine. So as far as I'm concerned, you don't necessarily have to solve it exactly this way. You don't have to say, well, square root means fractional exponent one half. It's fine if as long as you do it correctly, right? You could have just as well written something like this, right? You could have said that, well, it'll be the square root of 25 times the square root of x to the 4 times the square root of y squared. That's perfectly legitimate. You could have done that. Okay, now I have a, a slightly different question. And that is that, what about this expression, the square root? Uh, let's make it like this. Let's make it as simple as possible. The square root of x squared when x may be positive or negative or zero. This may be slightly surprising to you. <coughs> may be slightly surprising. <coughs> so what is it? The square root of x squared is what? So, so let this be a warning to you, right? Your previous training, right, by your, by your, you know, previous
previous instructor is lacking right here in this position. Okay, but this is my experience, and this is why I'm making a point a point here, right? This right is x squared to the one half, right? That's its meaning. So notice that's one over two, and two is even. Right? Two is even. So if you're taking an even root of something, the result must be what? It must be positive or zero. Right? It must be positive or zero. So the square root of x squared is not x. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. It's the absolute value of x. <coughs> so let's see why that's the case. Right, so this is, you know, important. Right? Important when it, when an instructor says something is important, that means it's going to be tested. <laughs> okay. The square root of x squared equal to x is false. This is this is wrong, and it will be counted as wrong. Okay, the reason why is, for example, if if it was true, then the square root of negative three squared would be negative three. Is that true? If the square root of x squared was x, then the square root of negative three squared should be negative three. Is that true? No, because what's negative 3 squared? It's 9. And then you compute the square root of something, it must be positive, and therefore the answer must be 3, right? So this is wrong. Wrong. However, this is correct. So the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Okay, now that being the case, that being the case, now I'm going to take the first example that's on this page that we're currently on. Okay, so then here's this. And I'm going to modify it just slightly. Assuming only that, uh, so neither one, making neither assumption. So now x can be something positive or y or negative, and y can be something positive or negative. Okay, now I want you to simplify this expression. <coughs> So probably no argument that you could say this, right? 5, the square root of x to the 4, the square root of y squared. Right? So a reasonable first step. Okay, so any arguments with the first step? Okay. <coughs> so then now I'm going to make a second step. 5, the square root of x to the 4, so I'm just going to leave those the same. And what do I replace the square root of y squared with? The absolute value of y. The absolute value of y. Okay, absolute value of y. Okay, now, what do I what do I replace the square root of x to the fourth with? Ah, right. So then that was okay, right? The absolute value of x squared. That's true. Multiplied by the absolute value of y. But tell me about the absolute value of x squared. Ah, it's positive anyway anyway, so you can drop the absolute value if you wish. You could say that this is equal to 5x squared absolute value of y. Okay, what's important for you to see, 
what's important for you to understand is that things that come outside of the square root have to be zero or positive. They cannot be negative. If you are dealing with a square root and you're telling me that I got something negative outside of the square root, then you have made an error. And I will find it and I will mention it. <laughs> yes? Uh, yeah, okay, you could do that. <coughs> it would be equivalent if you put the whole thing in absolute value, sure. Okay, <coughs> one more. So how about this? Mm, the square root, the square root of a squared. Oh, no, let's not do it like that. Let's do it like this. The square root of x squared minus 6x plus 9. And my claim to you is that you can rewrite this without radical. How can this be rewritten with, without radical? So simplify to remove the radical. So then I'm going to, by way of a hint, by way of a hint, I'm going to say that the removal of the radical is going to look something like this. The square root of y squared is the absolute value of y. The removal of the radical is going to look like that. Yes, right? The thing under the radical, right? So then now, so if for those of you that are consider considering teaching, right? So then the purpose of this question is to do the following, to exercise what we're currently working on and something that we worked on at the beginning of class. So what was it that we were working on at the beginning of class? Ah, factoring, this kind of thing. So probably, allegedly, right? The thing under the square root should factor, you think? Okay. So under the square root, under the square root, how does this thing factor? Right, x minus 3, mul yeah, so I'll do it like that. x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 3, right? That's how it factors. So that you could say that this is the square root of x minus 3 all squared. Okay, so then now, to remove the radical, what happens? Absolute value of x minus 3. So any question about this example? Because every time, so everything that comes out of the square root has to be positive, right? That's the rule, positive or zero. So let's imagine, what if, what if I removed the absolute value? Okay, then you could plug in, for example, x is zero. What if you plug in x is zero into, into here? What do you get? Negative three. Whereas, if you look at the original expression, right, what do you get if you plug x equal to zero into here? You get nine, and then the square root of that should be positive three. And that's the reason for the necessity of the absolute value. Okay, everything that comes out of the square root must be positive. Other questions? Okay. So the last thing before we'll have a break is called rationalizing.
Okay, so then specifically, this is usually called, usually, uh, the instruction is rationalize the denominator or something like that. Denom, denom. Okay. <coughs> so, for example, uh, we'll just do this section by example. How about 3 divided by the square root of 2? So, the square root of 2 is not a rational number. <coughs> it's irrational. I mean, that it you cannot reason with the square root of 2. It's just going to do whatever it wants, whenever it wants. No, 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 that's not what it means, right? The square root of 2 is not rational because it can't be represented as the ratio of integers. So how do you rationalize this expression? So what does it mean? Okay, right, so th that's good. The square root of 2 means 2 to the 1 half. So what I want to do is I want to manipulate this expression. I want to manipulate this expression until the denominator doesn't have a radical in it. That's essentially what I, we can think of it. I want to I manipulate this until there's no more radical in the denominator. So the way this is going to go is this is a s standard thing that's always done in math. It, you, you might be surprised how frequently this is done. I'm going to multiply by something. What's the only thing I can multiply by and not change the expression? One, right? That's the only thing I can multiply by. That's the only legal thing. So multiply by one. Okay, but what we need to do, what we need to do is we need to sort of cleverly choose one, right? The one that we're, the, the representation that, that we want. Okay, so then specifically, 3 over the square root of 2, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2. Right? Because the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2, that's 1. That's 1, so I can do that. I can do that. Okay, But the purpose of, of doing that is that the numerator is now 3 square root 2, which is, okay, that's great. But what is the denominator? It is the square root of 2 squared, right, which is exactly as you say, it's 2. So this is 3 square root 2 over 2. Okay, so then now 2, that's a rational number. So that's what, that's the meaning of this instruction, rationalize the denominator. Okay, so then the, what I gave you, the square root of 2, not rational. And then you multiplied by 1, you sort of pulled this rabbit out of a hat, multiplied by 1, and then it <coughs> becomes rational. Okay, so then please rationalize this uh, thing here. So 1 over the square root of 5. By analogy to the previous example, I could multiply by square root 5 over square root 5, right? And then this is the square root of 5 over what? 5. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's have a more complicated one, <coughs> which will be more in line of the type of question that I will ask. So how about something like 2 over... 1 minus the square root of 3. <coughs> 2 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Ah. So again, right, we're going to do the exact same trick, right? 2 over 1 minus the square root of 3, and we're going to multiply by 1. Right, multiply by 1. That's the only thing that's legal to multiply by. But we have to be a little bit clever in choosing. So 
who knows? <coughs> Sorry? Now, 1 minus square root of 3 won't work, but that's close. Plus, right? So let's see. Right? 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay, now, before we get any further, before we get any further, I want to comment here that the denominator, the denominator in the expression that I gave you has the following form, a minus b. Right, it looks like a minus b. So then I, I, I changed that expression, a minus b, into a plus b. Right? So doing this change, right, a minus b becomes a plus b. How are these two expressions, a minus b and a plus b, related to each other? I'm, looking, I'm fishing for a c word. They are said to be conjugate to each other. Right? A, a minus b and a plus b are conjugate. Okay, so I multiplied by a plus b over a plus b. So now, let's see why, why that choice is the right choice. Okay, now that we know the name for, for what it is that we did, let's see why it's the right choice. Okay, so then in the numerator, you'll get 2 multiplied by 1 plus the square root of 3. And then in the denominator, in the denominator, you get 1 minus the square root of 3 multiplied by 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay, and my claim is that this is going to be really nice when it happens. <coughs> Okay, so in the numerator, 2 plus 2 square root 3. And then as for the denominator, we will FOIL it out. Okay, you'll get 1 plus the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 and then minus the square root of 3 squared. Okay, so then now, you know, the, the instruction was rationalize the denominator, and now it's starting to look even worse, right? We started out with, with one radical in the denominator, <laughs> and now at this position, now we have three of them, right? We've got the one radical, and that radical, and that radical. Right, so it looks like, oh, this is not good. But in fact, what's going to happen? Uh, the ones in the middle, they subtract and cancel, and then what happens to the last one? It squares and becomes three. Ah. So then, 2 plus 2 square root 3 divided by 1 minus 3. Divided by 1 minus 3. So you could say that this is 2 plus 2 the square root of 3 over negative 2. And then, wow, I could take it even further and continue to cancel and get what? So in the numerator, I could say 2 multiplied by 1 plus the square root of 3 over negative 2, and then what? I would cancel the, the 2 in the numerator and in the denominator and get, uh, finally, you know, negative 1 plus the square root of 3. Fantastic. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> okay, so I have 1102. We'll have break until 1110.